Good morning. We are just headed down to the garden. We're going to give you a garden tour. And I know it's been a little bit since we gave you one. We were, we did one in June and I had high hopes to do one a little bit sooner than this, but you know, life happens. And sometimes when you're gardening and running after small people and all that, you know, it doesn't quite work out how you think it should. Anyway, if you're new here, we have a back to Eden style garden. It's pretty large, uh, about 3,400 square feet, I think it is, plus some fruit areas. So. I'm gonna show you those. We have some new peach trees that we got last fall, and they were kind of looking pretty sad, but we fertilized them. And yes, I don't have wood chips around them yet, but look at this new growth, guys. That is super, super cool. Uh oh, there's another Japanese beetle. They were kind of munching on these pretty hard. And yeah, but we have some new growth, so that's really exciting. Our blueberries look like they're growing as well. It's kind of hard to tell, but they look healthy, so that's good. The Bermuda grasses trying to take over. We have a lovely little rose over here that I got when Bethany was born and it is blooming amidst the grass. So these are our thornless blackberry bushes. These two rows up here produce really, really heavily. And yeah, it's just a crazy jungle in there. As much as I try to prune it and stuff, ooh, I did get more mulch. And so I was able to mulch these walkways I just literally took the weed eater to it and put some cardboard down and yeah, it is what it is. Some of these bushes down here, like the middle one there, is kind of dying. I'm not really sure why, but it's okay. I am. We still have plenty of berries. So. And our elderberry bush over there is about ready to ripen. It is loaded with berries. Hopefully we'll get a good harvest. And then I'm not going to walk all the way down there, but our apple trees have a few apples on them. They're new this year. So I just left a couple apples on them to get them started. So now we'll go back over to the entrance of our garden where we typically come in and things have changed a lot since last time I showed you. So here we go. So our peanuts are super tall. They have not started to flop over yet, but I think they should soon. I kind of need to get my sweet potatoes out of there a little bit better. Whew. Anyway, my sweet potatoes have gone jungly wild. That is all sweet potatoes in there. Oh, you lost the bucket. Anyway. Something is starting to munch them right there. I'm not sure what it is. You wanna get the basket for mama? But we were able to get rid of three maybe groundhogs. So that definitely has cut down the eating of my garden. So I think maybe it's a deer, but I am not really sure what it is that's eating it. So we have tons more sweet potatoes over here on this side and they've really filled in underneath the broccoli. I really wasn't sure what they were gonna do, but I'm okay with them filling in under the broccoli. It keeps the weeds down. Anyway, we have, oh, I almost caught it. There was a bee pollinating this broccoli over here. Just a minute, baby. Which is starting to go to seed, which is fine. The groundhog really loved the broccoli. And so I just kind of was leaving it to leave, for him to leave my other stuff alone. Anyway, before Bethany gets too far away from me, I'm gonna show you my ginger. It is looking really good. So like down here at the bottom, you can see how big that that um, cluster will be like as big as all those stalks. So it's pretty incredible. And we have some parsley growing over there too. This little one wants to pick everything in sight, ripe or not ripe. Don't you? Do you just love picking stuff? That's gonna be a flower. Zinnia. Can you say zinnia? Zinnia. Yeah, so this is our pepper row all the way down. And we do have a lot of peppers on here. Not on this one because we picked some of them, but like we picked some jalapenos yeah. that were really, really huge. Oh, oh, you picked a pepper for mama? Can you put it in your basket? We have lots of green peppers coming inside these days. Anyway, we had zucchini all over in here, but took most of them out because they died. I need to still take out that guy because it's dead. But y'all, I got more zucchini than I think I would have gotten yeah. in New York. No, no, baby. No, 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 no. Oh. Okay, let's walk away from the peppers. Anyway, I got, oh, probably close to 40 zucchini, which is incredible for a southern garden, I feel like. So, I'm pretty set on grated zucchini and dried zucchini and all that. I've put some in the freeze dryer, and it's pretty nice stuff, I hope. You really want to pick that squash, don't you? It's not quite ready. Can we leave it be for a minute? 
Shall we go find some other stuff? Come here. Let's go so roll them other stuff. Oh, if I can get up. Okay, so anyway, we harvested our potatoes, which are in these rows that I'm gonna show you. It's a rather dismal harvest. Okay, so last year I planted 50 pounds of seed potatoes and I got 225 pounds of potatoes. It's an amazing harvest. This year I planted 58 pounds of seed potatoes and I got about 89 pounds of potatoes. So discouraging. There was a lot of rotten ones. Just, it was very discouraging. But some friends came from church and helped me pull them. So that was nice to just get them all done with and be done kind of in one morning. So like literally I probably took half an hour with the three ladies and their kids helping. So super quick. So then I planted some more beans in here because I needed some beans. I don't know if I told you about my other beans. So my other beans, we've gotten like a week of rain and it was cool and then it got really hot. And I don't know if that was the reason for this, but it looked like somebody had taken a flame torch to them and they started dying. Some of them, like not all of them. It was kind of weird. So anyway, I was like, well, I should replant so that I have enough beans for the year, you know. Um, so they produced a little bit, but not quite as much as they could have. So I replanted. Hopefully I get one more crop from them. And then, you know, the bean beetles, they, they're starting to come and all that. So it is what it is at this point. So then this volunteer watermelon was here in the potatoes. So I just kind of left it. And I also left those random zinnias that are coming up. You are crazy. We harvested tons of cabbage from here, which I don't remember if I said last time. And there's still some more growing. I think this is the coolest thing. Like after you harvest them, they grow multiple heads again. Super, super cool. So I don't know if any of this will be editable, but it might be. And then these are some sweet potatoes that had spread it on a compost pile. So I just took the slips and plunked them in here. They had really deep roots. And honestly, they're doing really, really well. There's a volunteer potato over there and one over there. Here, let's keep walking, baby. There had been carrots planted in here, three little patches, and we got 13 pounds of carrots out of this grass right in here apparently it was the year for carrots just not other things let's keep showing them the pumpkin is pretty much done i think anna got two good ones from it i was down here this morning trying to hack away at the jungle like i got that much weeded then you know you hit the bermuda grass oh hey there's a random potato in there i think um you hit the bermuda grass and it kind of demoralizes you a little bit anyway so, we got more volunteer watermelon here that I'm kind of making go that way over the potato patch to kind of use as ground cover. We have more sweet potatoes here that are slow. A little bit. Then we have this silly birdhouse gourd that is massive. Like, it's probably 20 feet by 15 uh. feet big. And it would be more if I let it come this way. So, the funny part about this birdhouse gourd last year and I had a birdhouse gourd that she had planted and then the volunteer watermelons took over and tried choking it up well this year it's a volunteer or Anna planted and I don't know which and it's trying to take over my plant so it's just kind of funny I'm like no get away from here so down here we have some more flowers yeah they're so beautiful aren't they Bethany and we got some honeydew in here they're hiding but there's some that are almost ready I was working down here the other night trying to get some of this cleaned out because it's so jungly. We got a bunch of big crimson sweet watermelon coming. It's like five of them, and I'm pretty excited about them. Now this spot down here is probably my favorite spot. Because look at just how beautiful that is. Most of this I did not plant. I planted like two zinnia plants. But like all of this beautiful zinnia color, I just love it. And so when I get discouraged about the rest of my garden, I just look at this and be like. Yeah, this is still beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's so pretty, huh? So, like, when the potatoes were dying, it just kind of looked ugly. So I'm letting this... Sweet, uh, so I'm letting this watermelon also come into the potatoes. Trying to keep it away from the peppers, but definitely just cover the ground here, guys. So and here's more of our peppers. And this guy is getting really tall. Loaded. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. This is the airplane. Airplane. So Bethany still really likes hunting for strawberries down here. There have not been very many lately, but when she finds one, I saw it. When she finds one, she's loving it and she must eat it. <laughs> it's pretty great. So, 
let's see beans there's some beans i guess we could pick them they are these ones are budding again so we might get another batch from them i haven't pulled them out so honestly the bean beetles haven't been crazy on them which is good so i might get more beans from them which would be great you're doing a garden tour i am doing a garden tour so like i took out those beans over there then we're back here to our trellis and our butternut squash like i said earlier they're getting ready to harvest and then we got some that are still doing their thing over there some of the plants died we actually harvested some spaghetti squash and uh, that was pretty cool hopefully they're good uh harvested one of those orange squash yep the honey nut squash so we have tons of cucumbers we have tons of the short little guys and no matter how many times i pick i feel like we get more and we got tons of the long ones someone on here earlier oh yeah this guy right here he needs to be picked he's really tall and big so then we come around the corner we need to pick tomatoes today too probably look guys so look at these big huge tomatoes these are amish paste tomatoes and they are so big oh, oh don't pick them yet hold on they are it's like as big as anna's hand probably like a baseball size i like this one of bethany's favorite things to do this year has been pick the tomatoes so it's been training her to only pick the ripe ones or blushing like i'll, I'll pick them at blushing stage but please don't pick them at you know Green. green. We have a few that might not ripen. I don't know. So the Roma plants that my friend gave me, Melissa from the Wild Hearts Homestead, they are doing really, really well, and so loaded with tomatoes, and they're huge. With some big old marigold bush. My lettuce is done. I'm going to seed. I'm gonna save the seed from it. These peanuts, interesting. These peanuts over here have not done nearly as well as the ones in my raised bed. Just interesting to note. My cilantro is all done. I should really take it out. I mean, tie up that tomato a little bit. I mean, I tried tying up these tomatoes and they just get popping over. Our corn is done. <laughs> what I meant. So, a bit of a sad story with the corn. Uh, we started picking some and it was great. And then, like, I went out the next day and a coon or a deer or something had gotten them and pretty much destroyed them. Like, had eaten a whole bunch of them. So we didn't get quite a good harvest from them, but I was able to buy some local corn and put it in our freezer. So it wasn't all lost. This is how you get seeds. And I harvested some of them. So some of these tomato plants look really, really healthy and good, which is great. Um, some of them need a little more tying up. And then, you know, we've got our huge cherry tomato bush that I'm trying to train up the chalice. <laughs> you like them? Uh -huh. You like being a chipmunk with them? Yes. Yes. I like we got some beefsteak tomatoes down here and some other tomatoes that are just kind of not doing great to on the trellis. So then we have some of this red flame that volunteered there, or maybe Anna transplanted it. I do have sweet potatoes in here, but they're not doing as amazing. Got lots of that red flame. You see a birdie, or is that a squirrel on the wire? So. I mean, this whole patch was full of sweet potatoes, but most of them have not survived. Those flowers are pretty over there. I forget what they're called. And then Anna's bush, or pole beans are growing up the thing. This jungly bungly. We've been trying to thin a little bit because it's very jungly bungly. Right, Anna? Uh -huh. This is horseweed. It just kind of looks ugly. But she loves it, so. I was letting it stay for a little bit. We found a tomato plant in here last night when we were weeding. And then her sunflower house is really coming alive. We got volunteer zinnia and a zinnia and these multi-headed sunflowers that are starting to bloom. When Bethany first saw them, she was so excited. She was like, ah, that's so cool. This one's getting pretty tall. It's like taller than me now, but not too many blooms on there. We have one the size of you. Chipmunk. <laughs> So I think that is all of our garden right now. I need to get harvesting those tomatoes before it gets too hot. And yeah, I think that's, and maybe the cucumbers. That's about all we're gonna harvest this morning and then we'll be done. And I'm gonna get it done before it gets 90 to 100 very quickly or before the baby is done. She likes helping with the blackberries for about five minutes and then turns into crazy child. So, you know, we get it done or we get up early and get it done. <laughs> So, I mean, thanks for watching. 
I have random food usually smeared on me because she eats, you know, blackberries and tomatoes and mm -hmm, all the things. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. How's your garden doing? Are you getting lots of food out of it? And is it still looking beautiful? Or is it looking, uh, kind of sad? Parts of ours look sad. Parts of ours look okay. <laughs> so we'll just look at the good parts, right? Right. <laughs> See you next time.